Hello and welcome on a special edition of Primetime, the first of 2018. And yes, another year has gone by just so quickly. Uh, just crazy, but overall feeling very happy about it. Uh, so we'll of course give you some uh, product updates seen very recently with this uh, pre sih teasing that of course still went on quite strongly, but also take this occasion to come back on what happened on the watchmaking planet during this year, full of surprises, intrigues, innovations, politics, main novelty, record breakers, perceived trends and the illusion of changing times. But talking about time that passes and you guys know that I'm pretty much into uh, sailing, well, a new record was broken a few days ago, just before Christmas actually, uh, with this French guy, François Gabard, who sailed around the world in 42 days by himself on the Maxi Trimaran sailing boat. When you think that such a record took three times longer only a couple of decades ago, well, it's uh, just another proof or illustration that everything goes faster nowadays in our societies. And on the other hand, watchmaking, a few century old craft, is still driving our interest and passion through a simple mechanical expression of this time precisely passing by and there are still so many interesting stories to tell and uh, innovation to witness. I find this truly fascinating but a minute remains a minute nonetheless. So I guess that you're well aware of my uh, positive and enthusiastic spirit and therefore I don't want to portray a dull image of this industry I love so much. But we all know that uh, on a business standpoint, well, watchmaking has been going through some uh, pretty, uh, pretty difficult times over the last two years. And this was not only the result, of, uh, the result of what I've unfortunately mentioned too often, meaning how a mix of greed, uh, short-term vision, and being detached from reality has had uh, some pretty negative impacts, uh, to, to say the least. But I also know that in a certain way, mechanical watchmaking is becoming more and more anachronic to a few. We, of course, I mean, don't need uh, watches anymore uh, to know the time. I mean, it's a rather expensive pleasure. And on top of it, I know that here on the Watches TV, well, we talk mainly about the very top of the pyramid. And that's part of the reason why, despite all these elements, I am so delighted are that our family, a little community, is growing nicely and thanks to all of you. I know we could uh, definitely get more views and so forth if we were to talk about more affordable uh, products and timepieces and watches. Uh, but on this channel, I really want to stay focused on mechanical watchmaking with a substance and will definitely continue to do so throughout 2018. So we have a pretty ambitious program aligned for you guys. And I really believe uh, this year should see us uh, reach a new level. I mean, more reports, more in-depth videos, more traveling, more who's who of watchmaking, more of these uh, walkthroughs. Uh, that's the new segment, uh, more education, but not in a boring way, more me, myself and my watchers. Unfortunately, didn't have enough time to do more of these uh, uh, during the, the, the previous year. And they are really fun to do on top of it. So well, 2018 is really looking good. And again, a massive thank you for all of those supporting us on Patreon. I really hope uh, we'll be able to build on that because this is a real game changer for us. So yes, business is showing signs of recovery for the watchmaking industry. And we hear it not only for, uh, from the brands, but very importantly from the suppliers themselves. And that's a, uh, a really good sign. So regardless, it doesn't mean that everything is fine and beautiful and we'll unfortunately continue to see some uh, struggle, uh, struggling real hard. Some brands could continue to disappear and everyone uh, should stay focused in these uh, changing times. I mean, distribution and e-commerce are definitely evolving. Uh, brands are adapting or using this as a new uh, development possibilities. Events uh, such as the Side Change and Basel World are also adapting their formats. Uh, product pricing is is being tackled uh, more responsibly. Well, I see this as good opportunity to start a new cycle for watchmaking. And I just hope uh, that it's not because we have these little uh, positive signs that mistakes from the past shouldn't be uh, repeated. So it's still early to be over enthusiastic. Everyone should keep their feet well on the ground and very importantly, listen to you, the customers. I really think that one of the main problems encountered by the industry within the, the last uh, couple of years, uh, started a bit earlier than that. Well, it's that brands have had this slight arrogance of thinking that people would buy whatever the brand feed them with. Uh, we tell you what to buy, at which condition, and you make the purchase, and as simple as that. Well, the world doesn't work like that, and the customer should be the number one priority of everyone. I mean, listen to him. He's the one making all these manufacturers work. Okay, for small niche and mainly uh, independent brands, the rules of the games are slightly different. You buy one of their timepieces 
precisely for their originality and difference. But when you manufacture 50, 100, 250 timepieces uh, per year, well, that's a totally different ball game than when you're producing in the tens of thousands. Uh, you know, uh, to give you a, a good example, I really think uh, brands should pay a much uh, closer attention to, uh, to the many comments that you guys uh, leave on this channel, uh, because this is real uh, precious information, actually. It's super valuable feedback. But I believe brands are generally still looking a little bit elsewhere. Anyhow, let's be positive. And when we look at 2017, there has been quite a lot of co really cool things happening. Like I recently mentioned, we've seen some real serious uh, innovation, the Asian graph. I mean, that was the first real evolution of the chronograph movement since uh, 200 years. The Zenith uh, DeFi Lab, uh, the blade uh, resonator of Dominique Renault, and very recently, Global Force released a little update on what they called their nano-mechanical project. Uh, though what uh, they present is not really happening at uh, the atomic level, but we're talking super, super small sized uh, mechanics. So Grubble Force's overall vision about this uh, type of endeavor is that historically the na natural evolution of mechanical watchmaking has gone from rather large to really small. Uh, think of the size of the movement of the tower clock of the 17th century uh, to the one that you will find today in your wristwatch. And this has been achieved uh, uh, with a better understanding of uh, science and uh, manufacturing processes. So that's the start of their thinking uh, process. And even though we see Grubel Force at the pinnacle of, let's say, traditional watchmaking, well, it doesn't prevent them uh, to push the boundaries of fundamental uh, research applied to watchmaking. So I won't go too much uh, in the details of this uh, because I think uh, it deserves a full video report on it uh, not, and not a little segment on this uh, special prime time. So it's really quite complicated and represents years and years of research. But concretely, what they've unveiled is a super small foudroyant mechanism, meaning a hand that actually displays the true frequency of the movement, uh, and in this case, uh, by eight increments per second. Uh, that's the equivalent of a four hertz movement, meaning 28,800 beats per hour. So this foudroyant mechanism is pretty rare. Uh, not many brands uh, display or master this, uh, but the main difference is that it normally uses quite a lot of energy. But in this case, the power consumption is totally minute compared to these other examples. By going down this route, it of course opens the door of displaying extra complication, and if you recall the size of the most complicated timepiece ever made, the Vacheron Constantin reference 57260 with its uh, incredible 57 complication. Well, I clearly remember your many comments about uh, its size and that it re resembled more like a clock than a watch. Well, with the advent of this technology, uh, we could well have uh, in the near future uh, like an uber complicated watch, even beating this crazy record of 57 complication. But in a wristwatch, okay, you might need a loop to uh, look at them, uh, like the one used by Global Force, something uh, they took from their art piece uh, with this uh, microscopic sculptures of Willard Wigan when you were looking actually through the crown. So talking about small, Piaget just shared with us some pictures of what is the world's uh, thinnest watch to be unveiled at SIH. This is the Altiplano Ultimate 910P Automatic, which is only 4.2 millimeter thick, with, uh, with some of the gears measuring only 0.12 millimeter of thickness. I mean, that's really quite something. So on another level, Ah Lange and Zöne introduced an 1815 timepiece in homage of Mr. Walter Lange, who very sadly passed away on the second day of this last SIH. So this watch features a very original deadbeat second that you can stop and reset as you want. Quite original. But let's quickly come back on 2017, as it was also marked by a series of very impressive records achieved by some uh, timepieces uh, in the auction world. Especially, of course, when you think of the almost 18 million US dollar for Paul Newman simple steel Rolex Daytona, uh, known as the Paul Newman. Yeah, that was quite, uh, quite crazy. Especially when you think and put in perspective that uh, one of the five models, models of the Patek Philippe uh, Caliber 89, one of the most complicated timepieces ever made, didn't find uh, a buyer during the May auction of Sotheby's with a price uh, set around 6 million US dollars. Or even when you think that uh, Patek Philippe Henry Graves Super complications sold a year previous to this uh, uh, was sold for 24 million US dollars. Well, that makes it sound like uh, if it was some kind of 
bargain. So overall, I would say that 2017 really confirmed that vintage uh, Rolexes are the hot commodity in auctions. And this will probably continue in 2018, especially when you, you know that Philips, the now super established big player in the watch auction scene, uh, thanks to the talent of Mr. Oral Bax, well, this auction house will organize a thematic Rolex uh, Daytona auction later this spring, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be rather spectacular. So in 2017, we also saw some rather important moves in the corporate world of watchmaking, and I'm talking mainly within the big groups of the industry. I guess some of you remember the surprising move of Mr. George Kern, the man who had just been uh, placed at the helm of Richmond after a 17-year-long career inside the group and uh, as ex-CEO of IWC. Well, he's now presiding the destiny of Breitling, which saw the arrival of a rather different type of owner with this uh, known-to-be pretty aggressive investment fund, uh, CBC Capital Partners. So Richemont is now headed by Jérôme Lambert, a man who was already in place at the very top of the Richemont food chain, uh, but was looking more at the operational sides of things, uh, pulling synergies and things like that. He's been, of course, uh, used to be the CEO of Gégé Le Coult and recently Mont Blanc. So he's now the man in charge, uh, but he will probably give a bit more leeway to the CEO of the various brands of the Richemont Group uh, in terms of how they will be able to express uh, their own creativity. So we'll soon see all about this uh, um, among some other uh, important news that will definitely occur in 2018. Anyhow, and coming back on the watch as well, I just can't wait to see all these uh, timepieces mentioned before and in person and so many more during the next SHH, which will start on the 15th of January and count on us to bring a large coverage of the first big watchmaking event of the year. We'll have uh, plenty of reports coming your way and I also take this opportunity to share with you that uh, we will soon introduce a new segment on the Watchers TV called Don't Do This At Home. Uh, we'll be partnering with uh, our good friend and master watchmaker Peter Speak Marin, uh, who recently introduced a new website called uh, The Naked Watchmaker, uh, where he takes uh, pictures of movements uh, that he is uh, disassembling. And I clearly thought that uh, this should also be done in video, of course. So we placed a very nice uh, workbench uh, within the Watches TV house. And as a sign of full trust, I gave him the only new watch I purchased, uh, purchased in 2017, and you'll discover which one it is very shortly. So we'll soon publish uh, this video, and there will be two versions actually, because as you can imagine, it's pretty long. Uh, so you'll have a summarized version uh, published on YouTube, and the full and extended version will be available for those uh, supporting us on Patreon. And again, another also massive thank you to the special ones that are helping with the transition translation and subtitles of our videos. This is just marvelous and I hope it will enable to expand the access of our passion for watchmaking to new, audi uh, new audiences uh, uh, around the world. And just for info, you are now more than 70,000 subscribed to this channel. That's quite something incredible. It makes me really truly proud and delighted and with 500,000 video views per month. Well, I just hope to, uh, to see these numbers continue to increase. So thanks to all for the shares, the comments, the likes and a super happy 2018 to all. Plenty of joy, happiness and health, I hope. Viva watchmaking and see you real soon.